Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ross Foreman with GFW. I'd like to welcome you to this week's media teleconference. Before we welcome our special guest, I do have an update for you. As many of you do know, yesterday on our website we posted a statement, and I'd like to read it for you if you didn't have a chance to see that. Effective immediately, Jeff Jarrett is taking a leave of, an indefinite leave of absence from his position as Chief Creative Officer to focus on personal matters. Jeff will be available on a consultative basis as needed. That is our statement. That is our only statement. During this teleconference, myself and Johnny Impact will not be taking any questions whatsoever on the topic and or Jeff Jarrett. So we ask you to please uh, respect the wishes and, of course, please respect uh, Jeff Jarrett's privacy. That said, it's a, it's a pleasure to welcome one of the newcomers to GFW, a, uh, I can't even call him a three-time champion in AAA, but rather a three-belt holder, the electrifying Johnny Impact. Welcome to uh, the weekly teleconference, Johnny. Hey, everybody. Uh, happy to be here. This is my first weekly teleconference, as uh, you probably gathered. Um, not even really sure how this works, but I'd like to say I'm really happy with my experience so far at Impact. I've uh, been blown away by the level of professionalism in the locker room, and I'm really happy to work with some of some of my old friends like Bobby Lashley and Chris Masters and um, and EC3, and then um, and also some of the, the newer talent. Um, I mean, I guess Loki and Eddie Edwards aren't new talent, but they're uh, new new friends of mine. Um, Eddie Kingston, LAX, Conan, I mean, go way back. I can talk about the whole roster at length, but I'll just cut it there and then uh, move on to say that uh, thoughts and prayers go out to uh, anyone that's been affected by Hurricane Harvey. I know I've got some family that has been, and um, it's uh, such a large number of people that have been affected that I feel like just about somebody that's uh, it's being affected right now, and um, that sucks. Johnny, if we can uh, ask you to expand on that uh, briefly, because I know you and I have talked. You, you do have family down in Houston. Yeah. Um, I have a, I've, man, I have a, like a, quite a number of cousins in Houston, and um, a couple of their houses were uh, not flooded, but uh, water just went up to, <laughs> right up to their doorstep, and, um, which is nice because um, in lieu of the house being flooded, uh, one of my cousins that has kids said, uh, <laughs> The kids loved it actually. <laughs> uh, they don't understand that the the uh, the water is, is damaging like all the real estate and the flooring and uh, creating a huge mess because to them it just seems kind of fun. But um, I think that's going to wear off because of basically like the widespread um, disorganization that's going to follow and uh, the amount of cleanup that is required. Um, I mean I'm. I was talking to uh, another buddy of mine, Jason David Frank, who's, who lives in Houston, who's also got a, a ton of uh, people down there that have been affected. We were supposed to do uh, a show together, actually in Nashville, Ross, um, <laughs> the other week, and uh, he ended up having to pull out last minute because the hurricane had hit. But uh, stuff stuff like that, just it, it sucks because it seems like it's out of your control and there's nothing really you can do about it, but... But uh, it helps uh, people in your life that have been affected by it. Alrighty. Well, of course, we send our uh, thoughts and prayers from GFW to everybody in the Houston area who's been impacted, and certainly uh, say prayers for everybody potentially impacted by uh, Hurricane Irma as uh, she bears through the Atlantic at this point. Yeah. That said, uh, we're going to move into some questions for Johnny. I will uh, a couple. Uh, business matters before we get going here. Uh, when, when we open it up for questions, I ask you uh, identify yourself and your media outlet. Once again, I also ask one question and one question alone. We have a lot of people who want to talk to Johnny. Please do not get back in line uh, in the queue for another question until I give you the uh, heads up because we certainly want to have everybody have a chance to, to talk to Johnny. And I will tell you, I don't normally tell you who's going to be on next week. However, I think it's very important in light of what's going on in the last 24 hours at our company. Uh, we're really happy to announce that uh, next week, right here on the teleconference, Big John, Scott Demore, and Sanjay Dutt will be on this teleconference to talk about where this company is going creatively. 
uh, through Bound for Glory and beyond. Uh, it's going to be a great teleconference. You do not want to miss that. Big John, Scott Demore, and Sanjay Dutt. All right, so again, if you have a question, I, I believe the queue is uh, uh, star six, and I will uh, open it up for some questions now. Unmuted. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. If you'd like to ask a question, please press one to add your, your request has been received. Hi there, this is James from Steel Chair Magazine. This is for Johnny. Is there anyone on the Impact roster at the moment that you really want to face? So there's uh, some of the guys in the X Division, Desmond Xavier, Trevor Lee. Uh, hey, J hey, Johnny, let me I cut you off for one second. Start over on sure. your answer. I, I, I didn't have you... Uh... Uh, unmuted for a second there. So if you'd answer his question again, I, I, that was my error. Okay. Um, sorry about that, James. There's a, one of the most exciting things to me about going to a new promotion like GFW is uh, exactly what this question is about. There's a ton of people on the roster that I've never had the chance to wrestle. So um, you've got guys, X-Division guys, like Trevor Lee and Desmond Xavier, both of whom I think are super talented, but I've never had the opportunity to work. Um, as Johnny Impact, that I, I think we could uh, we could tear down the Impact Zone together. Then um, there's a guy like uh, like Bobby Lashley that uh, man, him and I were real close when he came to uh, to OVW back in 2004, and uh, we even rode together when I first started on the road. He started at the same time, but we we haven't worked for the same company in over 10 years now, and um, he's grown as a performer and um, develops his own specific style, and I feel the same about myself, and it'd be really interesting to me to see how we match up now. Um, then, uh, clearly, the current champion, Eli Drake, um, I think uh, has been underrated for a long time. Certainly not in his, his mind. <laughs> he, he thinks he's the best thing since sliced bread, but um, in, a, in the eyes of the wrestling community, I think he's been underrated, and... Um, I would love the chance to have a a, a true one-on-one -on -one matchup to uh, to put my skills to the test against him in the ring. Um, how about you, James? James? Can you talk back right now, or are you muted? Yes, now we can. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'll muted myself for safety. <laughs> oh no worries. Um, is, there, what, is there anyone? What, what was you'd the like question? Me, is there anyone on the roster that you think that uh, you'd like to see me wrestle? Um, you've, you've pretty pretty much been exact with who I thought you would, you would want to face, and I'm I'm pretty excited to see uh, what you do in Impact because it's a a pretty di pretty big change, and it's going to be interesting to see what you do in there. I've been I couldn't agree more. Um, I feel like my style from uh, Lucha Underground and AAA via uh, and independent wrestling is a uh, is a little bit faster paced than um, some of the, the current roster. And, um, that, to me, like, anytime you have a difference of styles and a difference of attitudes, that, to me, usually creates the most interesting matchups. Uh, hello, this is uh, Riju from Sportskira uh, from India, long-time fan of yours. Uh, my question is, how was it working? Uh, uh, like, how was it working in the television show called Glow? Uh, how did the whole role come about? And for non wrestlers, how were the girls? <laughs> how were the girls in Glow? Um, the girls, uh, yes. the, the girls in Glow were amazing. Um, I'll, I'll start there. Like, they uh, are all very like hardworking and beautiful, obviously, but. Um, I think what really made that show work was the camaraderie between the girls on the cast. They had a, a, a really a really fun and tight relationship between themselves, and they were also, because they're so secure of themselves and their own abilities, welcoming to outsiders like me. And I was, uh, I was the guest star on the first episode, played Salty the Sack Johnson, 
which is one of my favorite wrestling names ever. <laughs> and um, I really felt uh, welcomed by, uh, by certainly all the cast members, um, the uh, the girls, and also by uh, by Mark Marin. Um, Mark Marin's one of the funniest dudes ever, and um, Carly, Liz, Jenji, all the other writers, creators, and EPs in the show um, really made that a, a positive environment. And I think that's the secret to a show's success is the positivity. And the thing that I noticed about the GFW locker room in its current iteration, um, everyone feels like they know what they're there for. They feel like they have something to offer. And I didn't feel any negativity when I, when I walked into the impact zone. I just felt like I was, I was, I was coming to like a high school reunion party. Like I was hanging out with a bunch of my old friends and everyone's excited at the idea of what we're about to create. Hi, Johnny. It's James from Wrestling Epicenter Interactive Wrestling Radio. Um, last time I spoke to you, we were, we were talking about Lucha Underground, and i got to tell you, when you came out on Impact, my he's now eight, uh, eight-year-old went nuts, but after the show, he kind of said to me, but what does that mean for Lucha Underground? I had no idea how to answer it, so I thought this might be the perfect option to ask you, what does this mean for the future of Lucha Underground? Well, um, I think one of the most exciting things happening right now in wrestling is this partnership between GFW and AAA and NOAA. And because of this partnership, there's going to be a lot of talent exchanges. Eddie Edwards, for example, just won the NOAA title. We've got um, Ijo de Fantasma, Tejano, and Pagano from AAA. We've got Garza and LAX from Conan's promotion, The Crash, and um, all these—I mean, all these four major companies now are working together. And to me, it's really interesting. It's like um, the sum of all these parts is, is greater than any one um, of these promotions by itself. So, as far as um, what's happening with Lucha Underground in general, and me with, working with Lucha Underground. Um, Lucha Underground is planning on doing a season four. I'm planning on continuing my relationship with Lucha Underground into season four. The specific dates for the start of the tapings have not yet been released. And um, I'm hoping they're ASAP because I can't wait to get back to the temple. But um, in the meantime, that's what's so cool about GFW is the opportunity to have all these new matchups and potentially have some crossover now with GFW and Lucha Underground. Fingers crossed for that in, down, in the future. Hello there. It's um, Francis from In Ring Pop. Um, the main question I want to ask you is like, um, yeah, at the moment you've wrestled um, internationally with GFW because you've got a relationship with AAA, NOAA, The Crash, etc. Will we see you on this side of the pond, like in Britain or Ireland or anywhere like that anytime soon? Um... I've got a couple of things that I've been, been talking about. Uh, a buddy of mine recently took over IPW and um, is talking about having um, me and Joey Mercury come out and do a tag match in December. Um, I'm still champion of five-star wrestling. Um, I know they've announced a bunch, a bunch of dates in uh, 2018. or if they, <laughs> if they haven't announced them, they're planning on it and haven't gotten around to it yet. But... Um, Specifically, when and for what promotion, I don't know, but I love working in the UK, and um, I'm planning to get back there sometime before the end of this year. You may now ask your question. Mr. Impact, thank you so much for, uh, I like that name, Mr. Impact. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. How are you today, sir? Doing great. I like, uh, I like being referred to as Mr. Impact. It just sounds <laughs> funny and formal. It does. It does. It kind of goes. Um, my question is a little bit of a serious question. Uh, we, mm-hmm. all right. Well, you did work over again, Lucha Underground with uh, the young lady, sexy star, and and from what I know and from what I've heard, you have a pretty good reputation as a pretty good dude in the industry. Now, with all that being said, what are your honest feelings regarding what happened between Rosemary and Sexy Star over at Triple, I'm sorry, not Triple A, but Lucha Underground, and how was it working with, with Sexy Star? Did you find her at all to be dangerous? Um, 
Muted. Uh, first of all, the incident you're referring to, I believe, was at Triple Mania. In, uh, it was for AAA just on uh, August 26th uh, between Sexy Star and Rosemary. During the match, um, I feel like there was friction between Sexy Star and uh, the other girls, not necessarily Rosemary, but the, like uh, actually not her at all. That was Rosemary's first time to Mexico. The other women in the match in Sexy Star um, looked like they had some issues that they decided to resolve during the match, which uh, is, is unprofessional in my opinion. And um, the match suffered because of it. And tensions ran high. And uh, in, my, in my opinion, because she was in a heightened state of uh, aggravation or whatever it was, I felt like she took that out on Rosemary for no reason. Hey, Johnny, this is Sam Pierce from Fine yeah. Network Toronto. Uh, you've been really successful in uh, the wrestling, film, and television industry. Uh, how do you balance them to ensure that you're always performing at your best? Between uh, wrestling and film? Yeah, and uh, television as well. Well, I'm uh, sitting in my car right now in rush hour traffic on the way. <laughs> For one. <laughs> Um, for two, it's, uh, it's not easy. It's just about a lot of time management and prioritization. So entertainment in general, to me, boils down to making people feel something and whether it's TV or film or pro wrestling, the people, people watch to feel something, to feel an emotion. So in any of those forms, the story that we're telling in the ring or on the TV show or in the movie is, is written and designed to, uh, to convey that emotion. And if it's done well, it's successful and people like it, they can relate and they want more. Honing into that like, really is the core of entertainment, is uh, to entertain people, to make them feel something is... a uh, is one of like the first epiphanies that, um, that I had about just entertainment in general. And, um, that's something that Vince McMahon always talked about. Um, the point of wrestling is entertainment. And he would always say, entertain my ass. I need to be entertained when you're in the ring. And, um, that using that is kind of like the, uh, the constant between every form of entertainment makes it easier to transition back and forth because once you realize that's the point of it, it's storytelling and then the tools are different after that film and TV, your performances are more nuanced. You almost have to have your body and mind filled up with thoughts and emotions, but contain them. So the camera can zoom in close to your face and pull what you're thinking and feeling. Wrestling is different because it's almost like theater in the round, there's an arena full of people. And what makes pro wrestling pro wrestling is it's this performance art. The character is a crowd. And your feelings and actions need to be bigger so they can fire the crowd up. And um, when I was... Uh, so anyway, that's what I love about pro wrestling. It's, uh, it's, it's supposed to be something that fires people up and gets people to get rowdy, yell, heckle, cheer, and boo. And uh, that's what I did when I, when I was a kid. So in that long, rambling answer, I guess knowing what the point of entertainment is and taking everything one day at a time is how I balance it. Hey, Johnny, a quick follow-up to that question. Talk to us about Boone the Bounty Hunter, and uh, I believe that's a five-year project for you. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking about Boone. So I was a film major at UC Davis before I got into wrestling. And um, I knew that I wanted to do action movies pretty much my whole life. So um, when I left WWE at the end of 2011, I knew I wanted to do a movie. And I didn't know it was going to be Boone the Bounty Hunter at the time. But I wrote, I wrote a movie. It was like a sci-fi action thing that I ended up just throwing away because it wasn't that good. And then I started working on Boone with uh, 
with a buddy of mine, and the idea of the movie first conceptually was that I wanted to do a movie where the action was a combo of parkour, pro wrestling, and MMA, all the stuff that I'm best at. And the character is this goofy, reluctant hero, kind of every man type of guy with a boyish arrogance that uh, is fun because he gets to say goofy things, but also in an endearing way so as to not uh, alienate people. Anyway, so uh, that was what we set out uh, to write when we started Boone. And then it evolved and it became about Boone, the reality show bounty hunter who Boone's dudes like Kevin Sorbo and Jonathan Lipnicki for his reality TV show. And when uh, the show was going to be canceled because of ratings, he decided to go to Mexico after a real criminal to save his show. That's the, that's the gist of the plot of the movie. But um, we can, making movies is hard. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> so from the time I started writing it to uh, the time we shot it was two and a half years and then it took another two years of post-production and then um, getting the, the distribution deal until, until now where it's, it's out on DVD everywhere Amazon, Walmart, Dollar General and it's on VOD, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Xbox, Video, Voodoo, places like that um, took a really long time but uh Boone is the movie that I've done that I'm by far the most proud of, and people that have seen it have responded really well to it. Um, there's a lot of people that really liked it and <laughs> call me up with, uh, with Boone quotes, Boone Voyage, Boone Matata, stuff like that. And um, if uh, you're on this call and you haven't seen Boone, uh, please go out of your way to check it out. And um, shit, tell everyone that uh, is listening or reading this to uh, go out of their way to check out Boone because if you're a fan of pro wrestling and the things that I've done in the squared circle or six-sided circle now, <laughs> yeah, you got to check out the stuff that I pulled off in Boone the Bounty Hunter. Hey, Johnny, this is Graham Matthews from HiddenRoad.com. Uh, you've had a long and well-documented journey in getting to GFW between your work in AAA and Lucha Underground when most fans expected you to join GFW immediately following your WWE departure back in 2011. Uh, do you think now is a better time for you to come into the company as opposed to six years ago, considering how much you've grown as a performer? Yeah, I'm, I couldn't be happier with the way that it worked out. And the reason I didn't come right away was because when I left WWE, um, it wasn't like I, I left on bad terms. I was, I was planning on just taking a year off, and um, I left because I wanted to do to do movies and um, to, make that, uh, to make that movie that ended up taking a lot longer than I thought. So I talked to uh, Lagana, Taz, Dixie, and, um, and Big John, Big John Gaborg several times back then. And it just never really uh, happened because I didn't want to uh, take myself out of Los Angeles. Then, um, well, like you said, well-documented journey, all that stuff happened. <laughs> and uh, I ended up in a situation where was working for Reach Underground, working for AAA, and there's an opportunity to start having all these promotions work together, and I could represent all three of these companies at the same time and still have uh, enough control of my time to, uh, to write movies, to, to audition, to do fun shorts and things which is ultimately all I wanted with, uh, well, as with WWE, it was a little bit more creative autonomy. So for me personally, this is the perfect time. And I would say that's first. And then secondary, for me professionally, I'm the best I've ever been physically in the ring and also psychologically when it comes to understanding what a pro wrestler is supposed to do, <laughs> basically. How to, how to have good matches, what your job is when you're in the ring. Ryan right here for Main Event Radio. Johnny, I wanted to know your thoughts on Eddie Edwards winning the DHC championship in Japan. Um, I don't know Eddie really well. Um, I've met him a couple times, and then I uh, got to work with him at GFW, and I uh, always liked him and was super impressed with uh, – 
his ability and knowledge at, uh, at GFW. And um, talk about someone who's really earned it, man. He's, he's been around forever. He's wrestled all, all over the world. And uh, I know winning that NOAA championship meant a ton to him. And um, it was one of those things when I saw it, it just put a huge smile on my face. Um, and he's a really good dude, but also a really deserving and talented guy. And, uh, I, yeah, really happy for him, really happy to see that. Johnny, this is Jim Barcelo, MiamiHerald.com. You were talking about acting and University of California Davis. How has the acting training helped you, or did it help you when you were getting involved in pro wrestling? I mean, it's, uh, I mean, really, like, pro wrestling involves performance and acting. So sometimes at the beginning of my career it helped, and sometimes it hurt because there, there are different skill sets. Um, acting, especially for film and TV, is, is different than, than wrestling. And there's some crossover. But really, understanding character work is what helps me the most. So, like, figuring out who you are as a person, who you are in the ring, or who you are while you're playing a character for a, for a movie, for example. How is that similar to who you are in real life? How is that different? from who you are in real life. What do people expect from you when they see you? How are you perceived by people and realistically assessing yourself? And then wrestling is different than uh, film and TV because a lot of your character creation, a lot of who you are, really comes down to who you are as a person and turning up attributes about yourself that resonate with people that people like. So... I think really just the introspection required to be an actor is what helps the most with pro wrestling. What's up, Johnny? This is Ryan Fisher from Total Wrestling Magazine. Um, last week, I was talking to Eli Drake, and you made your debut in the match and when he won the GFW Global title, and he said uh, he st that you strike him as a guy who's more about style than substance. Like, I would like to get your opinion on that comment. Oh, man. It's like the pot calling the kettle black, right? <laughs> I would say uh, Eli Drake is definitely more style than substance. Unfortunately for him, though, his style is kind of crap, too. Um, as far as me going like more style than substance, I mean, maybe he's confusing hard work for uh, style over substance because, in my opinion, part of the job of a professional wrestler is to evolve mentally, emotionally, physically, and at the end of my WWE run, I started integrating a lot of my pro wrestling moveset. And if that's what he's referring to, then he's sorely mistaken. Because by me spending a, hours in parkour gyms and gymnastic centers for the past couple of years, um, I mean hours a couple of days a week, to uh, maintain my physical ability and improve my physical ability, that's not uh, style over substance. That's what pro wrestlers should be doing. And that's what I've done. Um, and he's spending all that time uh, lifting weights like a meathead at uh, LA Fitness, training like Dorian Yates. And um, as a result, his training mentality is, is stuck about 20 years in the past. And when we wrestle, I think it's going to be obvious the difference between those two training philosophies, which one is more applicable to modern day professional wrestling. Hi, this is Jeremy Walker from Real Sport. Um, wanted to follow up on the, the questions about your um, film and uh, TV career so far, Johnny. I uh, wanted to know what it was like working with um, Jason David Frank and others on um, Ninjak versus The Valiant Universe. I'm really excited for Ninjak vs. The Valiant Universe. The trailer, I believe, is going to be released uh, this week. Um, Jason David Frank, Derek Saylor, Kevin Porter, Mike Rowe from Arrow, um, Sierra Foster. The, uh, the cast of, of this uh, digital series, in my mind, is a 10 out of 10. Everybody is uniquely them and perfect fits for their own specific characters. Um, outside of that, I feel like 
I've become legitimate bros with uh with just David Frank and Derek and Mike, um, which is one of the, my favorite things about working in a creative industry. It's because you're when you're working together with someone creatively, really cut a lot of the superficial shit quickly because you two have to relate as your characters sometimes in really highly emotional circumstances. So basically it's been, it's been great. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, just David Frank. He's super talented and the rest of the cast is too. That goes for, uh, Josh Dinesh, the guys that are owning, own and run Valiant as well as, uh, Aaron and Sean, the, the director and, um, sound editor for a um, bat in the sun. I think uh, when that trailer drops, people's minds are going to be blown. Hello, John. This is uh, Alain Levin from the Israeli wrestling community. And uh, it's a real honor talking to you. Um, I don't know if you know, but you're huge here in Israel. And uh, friends with once met when you debuted in uh, GFW. Um, now, you've been wrestling for 15 years. Uh, what do you think about the modern, modern wrestling style? That's a good question. Because to me, that's a... I mean, I, I can talk forever about that. I think that's one of the coolest things about uh, modern-day wrestling is um, the evolution of, of the pacing and the moves and the, the current state of independent wrestling. I, uh, I really had to update my style and thinking. So... When I first started, and I was learning from uh, from guys like Jim Corn- Jim Cornette, who's now at Impact, which <laughs> which is super funny and cool, and uh, Al Snow, Danny Davis, even like the and then getting up on the road with uh, with Fit Finley and Arn and Vince and a lot of uh, the psychology of what worked even when I started back then in two thousand three, four, five, six is now it's you did what um, I do every weekend on independent wrestling shows. Um, this weekend, Mondo Lucha in Milwaukee and uh, in that show in New York, I think we would get chewed out by a, <laughs> by anyone in the business who, who saw the match if, if it was uh, that match 15 years ago. Now, is that a good or a bad thing? I don't know. It's hard to decide whether it's, it's a good or a bad thing, but I think ultimately because wrestling is entertainment and it exists for the fans that come to see, that seems to be the driving force of why wrestling has evolved because it's what fans respond to. It's what fans make the most noise, most noise for. So um, being a part of the wrestling industry is really about making sure you stay relevant making sure the stuff that you're doing is stuff that uh, fans want to see now and not 10 years ago. And that's one of the, uh, the things that I'm excited about being at GFW for is uh, applying all my <laughs> wrestling philosophy and knowledge and things that I've, I've picked up wrestling from places like AAW to Defy to Wrestle Circus and Lucha Underground and AAA and all the, all the other places all over the world to... GFW, and I think the uh, the melting pot of what I bring to the table versus what's what's there and what everyone else brings to the table is the the heart of wrestling. Is what makes it interesting. And and you nailed it. You're right. Um, wrestling is evolving, which is why I, a lot of times I refer to uh, 2017 as Mundo 17, or I guess in this case Impact 17. All righty, we'll, we will open it up for a second question if you people have one, so feel free to... If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Uh, reporter wants to know, where can he buy the sunglasses that you wear? The sunglasses that I wear, probably your best bet is to get them on Pro Wrestling Tees. Um, I've got a couple of t-shirts up on that site for sale, but also uh, also you can get the window glasses there. All righty. You may now ask your question. Hey, Johnny, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again. You know, one of the questions I had to ask, I wanted to ask you actually earlier was, you know, you've been at 
in every, every organization and you've succeeded in every organization you've done extremely well and i've been a big fan of your work for many many years with all that being said there are a lot of young up-and-coming wrestlers and the new locker room that you're in is a di- is a diverse one excuse me so what do you have to say to or what kind of uh what kind of a uh, let's just say um what's the word i'm looking for i'm drawing a blank what's the uh What do you have to say to the young talent that's coming up right now? And what kind of... uh, I'm drawing a blank, Johnny, but I think you have an idea of what I'm asking you. Yeah. Um, Advice? Yeah, that's the word. Exactly. What kind of advice do you... (laughs) Unbelievable. What kind of advice do you want to give to the young talent that not only are you working with, but the talent that may be listening to this or the talent that may be coming up in the future? Man, to, uh, to the young talent... Muted. Coming up in the future, really... I mean, I used to hate it when people say this when I was when I was a young talent coming up. But the young talent is the future of the business, and uh, it's not going to be on my shoulders forever. At some point, it's going to be on the Desmond Xavier, the Ricochet, the Shane Strickland, solely on their shoulders, and they'll be passing down knowledge to uh, the generation that's after them. But um, to to young talent, I think uh, the best advice for me is uh, a couple things. Wrestling is a crazy business, and um, it drives a lot of people nuts because there's such a lack of control. So learning to uh, not worry about things you can't control and only worry about things that are within your ability to control is uh, one of the most important first lessons to learn. There's a lot you can control, though. Your in-ring ability, your physique, your promos, how you look, how you walk, how you talk. That's your job. You need to get as good at all those things as possible. The things you can't control depend on uh, maybe who's uh, who's running creative, somebody's... uh, somebody's uncle like a famous wrestler do they know somebody or someone can save a truck full of tapes from burning down and now they're employed for life there's there's things like that that uh, are out of your control that you can't worry about but ultimately like uh macho man used to say the cream of the crop rises to the top because in this business people want to put their name on the most talented talent so being being your best at every aspect of being a pro wrestler ultimately is going to result in you going the furthest in the business. Hi, Johnny. It's uh, Ryan from the Um Just wanted to ask you, you mentioned your background in film and college, and, of course, we know about um, your experience in Hollywood. Is there any chance that you'd want to get in production or creative in the wrestling business by chance? Thanks. Um, I've, I've thought about it. I've, I've thought about that several times. And uh, at some point, conceivably, yes. Because, uh, because I like variety, though, currently it feels like it's um, a lot of the stuff that I think of when I'm not wrestling is uh, – for some reason, I think of like feature films. They're usually action comedies, and um, instead of trying to like fight that instinct, usually I just write what I'm thinking of. Especially because I enjoy it. I think if you if you don't enjoy writing, it uh, it comes out when you're <laughs> when you're reading someone's stuff back. Um, also, anybody in the wrestling industry is involved somewhat in creative. I'm not necessarily like a, in the creative department on any of the shows that I'm working for currently, but if I have ideas, I'll, uh, I can talk to Scott Demore or Sanjay or Big or Jeremy Borash. I can I can present ideas to them and we can discuss. Same thing with Lucha Underground. Same thing with AAA. And and ultimately, not everyone is in the same situation that I'm in where they can pick up the phone and make a call and have, uh, have, the, have the creative department pick up. But most people are because the, uh, 
even even if you can't call Sanjay at home and at midnight, <laughs> um, all those people that I just mentioned are looking for new ideas and looking for good ideas. So anybody that's on the roster that has anything good will will be heard. Um, anyway, so that's a long way of saying uh, wrestlers are usually already in the creative department, whether they know it or not. Jim Varslow, MiamiGirl.com. Do you think Hollywood's attitude toward pro wrestlers has changed over the years because of success of someone like The Rock in the industry? Definitely. I think wrestling right now is, is hot. Like Wrestling is a hot industry worldwide right now. And yeah, that's partly due to The Rock. I mean, he's... He was on the cover of GQ, right? The highest paid, uh, or Forbes, the highest paid actor in Hollywood. But not only that, like, one of the most prolific actor producers alive today. Uh, that dude is everywhere. He busts his ass. And um, because of that, he's got the respect of the entertainment community as well as the professional wrestling community and broken into just pop culture in general. So because uh, he's hot, I mean, you got Dave Bautista, who's become an A-list actor with uh, the stuff that he's done in Guardians, which is really, um, for me, was really cool to watch because it reminded me of uh, Dave. He's like a he's a big teddy bear. He's a super nice guy, and um, I think that came out in his performance um, when he was doing Drax. John Cena stepped up his game also. He killed it so hard in Train Drax that now he's uh, he's getting more and more stuff and. Um, all of those things. Um, and Stone Cold Steve Austin is another one. I mean, he's a part of pop culture. He's a uh, he's <laughs> he's hosting an EP of three different TV shows now, I think. And um, really, all that does is it does open doors for guys like me. And um, <laughs> all I need is a little a little hole for me to kick the door open wide because I'm uh, I'm hungry right now to get further into that world. Brian Ryder again for Main Event Radio. You mentioned Jason David Frank earlier in the call. Does he have any interest in getting involved with pro wrestling in any capacity? Yeah, him and I have talked about it. We're looking at doing a a tag match, like uh, me and him versus a couple of people. Uh, he's uh, he's tight with Booker T. They both live in Houston. And we're thinking about doing something like me and him versus uh, me and him versus two other guys. We haven't gone too far down that path yet at uh, one of Booker T's shows. Um, it might even be something we could do on Impact now since this is a GFW call. But uh, he he's a lifelong martial artist, and he knows how hard he worked at, uh, at karate and his karate schools and training for stock choreo. So I think he's a fan of pro wrestling. He loves the business, and he'd like to, uh, to be a part of it. I don't think he wants to be a full-time pro wrestler by any means. But... Uh, he just likes entertainment and is a fan of pro wrestling and thinks that it'd be fun to do a match. Hello there, it's Francis from Evening Pop. Um, the main question I ask you, you you've come into GFW and on run head in the corner is bound for glory. Um, hopefully you'd be going there, um, maybe taking on the global force, global champion, maybe against Eli Dre, but would you be defending maybe some of the other titles that you've won at Bound for Glory if you actually got that far? Oh, yeah. I'd put anything on the line against uh, Eli Drake. Um, when when we get there, if uh, if I'm still try campion of AAA, I'll put all those things on the line. Um, I'm that confident that I would leave Bound for Glory with uh, Eli's title if he's still... If we have the match if I still have my titles. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really excited for Gone for Glory, though, man. This is one of the pay-per-views that's uh, the tent poles of Impact. And um, I remember watching it uh, for the past the 10 years ago. It's going to be a really cool thing to be a part of. Johnny, what's it like going through the airports with uh, three championship belts? It's a pain in the ass. Um, well, I'll be honest, it uh, it sucks because I'm, I'm old school. I uh, always bring two bags gear bag that you never check. So that's got the titles and um, gear just in case of an emergency, in case they lose your bag, you 
still perform. But they always pull all three titles out, especially if you have three. If you have one, sometimes you can sneak through. Three titles in your bag, though, they pull all three out usually, and, like, all the TSA people come over and then have the time they want pictures, and it turns into a fiasco. <laughs> so you have to be at the airport three hours early, not the standard 90 minutes. Son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is James with uh, Steel Chair Magazine once again. Is there a dream match that you would want to take part in? Any wrestler that's not necessarily in GFW, or just anyone out there that you'd want to face? Any wrestler, anywhere. Um, man, uh, it'd be awesome to uh, to wrestle Okada. I've been a big fan of the stuff that's been going on with New Japan. Um, Daniel Bryan would be another dream match. Um, a lot of like some of the some of the good with you guys right now. Like uh, I put Bobby Lashley on the dream the dream match list just because uh, it's been fascinating to see how well he's done in both MMA and pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. A true two sport athlete, and it's very rare. Um, he's also a good friend of mine. Let's see, um, man, like that's a tough question because I feel like there's too many dream matches. Macho Man was always my, my dream match growing up, uh, a singles match against HBK, but some of these, I think, are never going to happen. The, the ones with the potential are the, the, the first ones that I've mentioned. Hey, Johnny. Uh, Graham Romino with InRemote.com again. Uh, similar to yourself, your former tag team partner, The Miz, has actually reinvented himself in a major way in recent years. And he's arguably, arguably better now than he was before. Uh, what have been your thoughts on his recent resurgence in the WWE? Have you kept in contact with him at all as well? Oh, yeah. We, uh, we text back and forth all the time. Every time my, my IMDb meter is higher than his, I can snap it and send it over to him and tell him that Blue the Bounty Hunter is better than Marine. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's been killing it. And uh, I, I think it really comes down to the Miz is always emphatically himself. He, uh, he never changed who he was. He's always, whether in the ring or in real life, kind of this, this loud, abrasive, confident guy. And um, he's also a really good friend and a loyal friend and um, <laughs> in smaller groups, really fun to hang out with. But uh, because he's got that quality that's remained consistent, he knows who he is in the ring and out of the ring. And I think that confident core of, uh, of, of Mike Zanin is what's propelled him to the next level of success with wrestling. It's, uh, it's, it's been really cool to see. I put him on the dream match list also. It'd be cool to, uh, I don't know if it'd be more fun to tag with him or kick his ass, but either one would be interesting. Hi, Jay. It's Ryan from Total Wrestling. Again, I just thought I'd ask you, talking about your dream matches, who your idols were both in the wrestling business and in the film and TV business. Um, man, so wrestling idols, it's hard to, it's hard to pick, but Macho Man, HBK, Mr. Perfect, and Rock. Mm-hmm. Film and TV, the, the first guys that I got really sucked into when I was a kid, but I feel like made me into the, the man that I am today, are, uh, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, John claude Van Damme, um, our, our 80s action heroes, um, Jack Burton from uh, Big Trouble in Little China. The, uh, those movies were the kind of movies that I, uh, I watched over and over again when I was a kid and loved them. I could quote them line for line and is, is why I, I became enamored with filmmaking and um, professional wrestling. It's what I grew up on. I grew up on action movies and pro wrestling. Hi, this is Alain from the Israel Wrestling Community again. Uh, some of your uh, co-workers and friends, uh, such as uh, Chris Masters, uh, have been wrestling uh, in Israel. Uh, what have you heard about the Israeli wrestling scene? And uh, do you think there is any chance of you coming to wrestling, wrestle in Israel along with uh, JFW? I love you. I mean, uh, Chris, Chris uh, said that I... He absolutely loved it over there, and um, was uh, was telling stories about how uh, how awesome it was in uh, in Israel. And 
for me, I uh, I just never been hit up by I don't I don't know who the promoter is trying to get me on. But if you listen to this, yeah, hit me up. I definitely like to make an impact in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. You may now ask your question. Hey, Johnny Impact. It's uh, Big Ray One Wrestling. Now, I, I have what you might call a keg, and you have a six-pack. So my question is, regarding your fitness, I mean, what do you do on a daily basis? What does Johnny Impact do to get those six-pack abs, and how do you maintain that physical condition, you know, wrestling year after year after year? Um, really, for, for me... Muted. First is uh, functional training. So... I got a workout program called Out of Your Mind Fitness, and I fluctuate between that, um, some old school bodybuilding stuff, and uh, lately DDP yoga. Um, I was a little hesitant at first because I thought uh, I was in better shape than uh, someone that used DDP yoga, but basically I got my ass kicked by DDP yoga <laughs> and, uh, and, and learned that there's a lot of cool injury um, prevention stuff and a lot of conditioning uh, that, that you get with DDP yoga. But ultimately, that's kind of, that's the kind of the core, the foundation of your house is your, your training regimen. So I train like a maniac. I'm a little bit OCD about it even. I'll, I'll go some sort of resistance training, functional training, almost every day, usually six days a week at least. One to two hours of that. Then in addition to that, probably four days a week, I'm doing some sort of skill training or wrestling. And the skill training is, is boxing, parkour, martial arts, kicking, uh, tricking, that kind of thing, or, or pro wrestling training. So that basically has got like the, the foundation of uh, my movement patterns, like my muscle mass, like what, what my body is used to do. Then uh, to really to lean out to get a six-pack, after you have your training regimen set, it's going to come down to nutrition. And uh, that's an answer that a lot of people don't like to hear, but it's true. <laughs> you are what you eat. And um, basically for me, what works best is uh, simple diet rules and consistency. Bro, 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 you got to do some more DDP yoga, bro. <laughs> Oh man, don't knock it. It's a, uh, it's uh, it's amazing. And um, and yeah, dude, DDP is a DDP is a unique person. He's uh, always promoting himself. He's always promoting his stuff, and uh, it's cool to see because he believes in it. And also, he's he's one of the uh, the most altruistic wrestlers that I've ever met. He'll he'll bend over backwards to help anybody. Hi, it's Jeremy Walker from Real Sport again. Johnny, do you still keep in contact with uh, Matt Capitelli, and how's he doing these days, if you do? Um, did you see what happened with him recently? Um, they, uh, they, they found some more uh, cancerous cells in his brain, and he's going to have to go back to uh, treatments, which sucks. I... Uh, I was going to say I saw him not too long ago, but I guess it was a few months back now. Um, I, uh, I did a, I did a show in, uh, Louisville at OVW and, um, and him and I hung out and caught up for a couple of days. It was, it was awesome. Actually, we talked about tough enough and how crazy it was that we both moved to Louisville together and roommates back then. And that was before he'd, uh, he'd relapsed or they, they noticed anything. And, um, I said this about Matt Capitelli, like, uh, he to this day is one of the most positive people I've ever met, and um, his run of uh, injuries and cancer and uh, and bad luck has been harder than just about anyone I know. And um, he's always remained positive, and uh, he's actually somebody that I think about when I think I'm having a hard time or a shit day. Um, I think about things that he's dealt with and how positive he's remained throughout everything. But um, but yeah, I, I talk to him still. I talk to him. Uh, I, I say at least once a month, sometimes more. We've time just for a couple more questions, so we'll try to rapid fire through the last few we have. 
Hello there, it's Francis from Ring Ring Pop again. Um, the main thing I want to ask you, how fun it is working with your um, your other half um, working in GFW at the moment? Oh, you're talking about Taya Valkyrie? Yeah. She, uh, she is so excited to be working with GFW, um, and I have loved the, uh, the entrance, her music. Um, you guys need to tune in Thursday to, uh, to see her debut, I believe. Um, she's, uh, she's been loving it and has been really happy. And, um, you know what they say when, uh, when your girl is happy, you're happy. And so, uh, that's, that's part of. Hi John, it's Ryan from Total Wrestling again. I just thought I'd pick up on, there were rumors last year of perhaps a return to the WWE around the time of the brand split, and obviously that didn't happen, but you say you leave on good terms. Is there a chance you could perhaps go back there one day? Um, it, it's hard to say because I believe so, but um, it's, it's ultimately not completely up to me. Um, I will, though, say that I'm extremely happy right now with... Uh, with my life and my career, with me uh, with Lucha, with uh, AAA, and with, I don't even have enough time to uh, to wrestle all the shows that they those companies have, and I also am afforded the opportunity, like I mentioned earlier, to uh, pursue my own projects, to uh, to make boon the bounty hunter basically, and um, to get further into the entertainment industry. Um, so as far as like. Uh, I come back to WWE. There are a ton of people on the roster that I haven't had the chance to work with. Love to uh, work circles around Rollins and Reigns. <laughs> Have matches with the uh, with the Miz, Finn Balor, Lesnar, Samoa Joe. Like all those, all those are exciting matchups and would be great for me. But sometimes I sit back and think, like, what's to say that those matches couldn't necessarily happen in GFW or Lucha Underground because the business changes so quickly. So, as, as far as that goes, um, sure, it's possible, but I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. Hey, Johnny Graham Matthews from Hinderroad.com again. Uh, between Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, and Johnny Mundo, you've obviously had a lot of names in wrestling. And this might be a simple question, but how did the Johnny Impact ring name come about? Um, I think it came up as a, as a, a little bit of a joke first, because we were thinking about all right, well, um, Mundo is a Lucha Underground name, and um, we wanted to do something different, so we started like brainstorming names, and I forget who said Johnny Impact first, but it was like kind of like, Johnny Impact. <laughs> and then uh, everyone thought about it for an extra couple of seconds, like, you know, <laughs> that could work. <laughs> it's a little bit cheesy and on the nose, but, uh, but it's also fun, and wrestling should be fun first and foremost. And um, I've actually really grown to like it. Hey, uh, this is Riju from Sportskira. My question is that you have you having worked with Alberto El Patron, a man who's always at the center of controversy. What's your impression of him as a performer and as a human being? Um, center, center of controversy is, is a good way to describe Alberto. I've uh, I've had a lot of matches with him, and um, I've always been impressed with him in the ring. Uh, the season finale of uh, Lucha Underground. Season one was me and him. I had a great singles match with him in Lucha Underground. I worked with him a handful of times when we were working together with WWE. Out of the ring, my the Alberto that I know and hang out with is uh, is uh, raising hell and having a good time hanging out at, at bars and clubs, and I've had a lot of really good times with Alberto. And as, as far as uh, the controversy and the stuff that he's dealing with, um, for specifics on that, you'd have to talk to him. But from my standpoint, I've always had a really good time with that guy. <laughs> He's ridiculous. He's super fun, though. All righty, Johnny. We have time for one final question. And as usual, Ryan, the dance floor is yours. Hey, Johnny. Ryan from the thegorillaposition.com. Um, you wrestle on uh, some of the biggest stages in the world. And at the same time, you, you mentioned you've kind of been on a six-year journey since. So, if you win the title to close Bound for Glory and you, you're hoisting the belt, would you say uh, things have come full circle? And um, how are you going to feel if that happens? Thanks. Have a great day. 
Man. Um, well, that's an easy way to answer since you just threw the answer in the question. Yeah, things will come full circle or full hexagon, so to speak. <laughs> um, winning a, if, if, I, if I can beat Eli Drake and, and win the title at Done for Glory, it would be one of the highest honors um, that I've achieved in my career. And I hope that uh, I hope that match happens. I hope that's the case because I would like nothing better than to take GFW and um, make it into something great that everybody loves. And um, I feel like it's it's there now. But I want the chance to take the GFW ball and run into uh, the end zone of wrestling eternity with it, spike it, and then show everybody what I think the best pro wrestling in the world could be and is. And the GFW roster right now has the talent to do that. And if you think about the talent rosters of GFW, Lucha Underground, AAA, and NOAA, I think that is the biggest and most interesting assortment of companies and wrestlers in the world. And ultimately, interesting and entertaining is what people watch for. So any other company in the world not involved with what we're doing and what I'm doing had better watch their ass. All righty, Johnny. I, I know you're uh, heading to an uh, uh, audition now, so we won't take up any more of your time. You've given us an hour plus. Give us a final thought as we uh, wrap it up for today. Well, um, ultimately, uh, wrestling is about entertainment and uh, the opportunity to entertain people at GFW, the fans that are watching on Pop TV and worldwide, is, uh, is an honor. It's always an honor to, to get into the ring. And um, anyone that's listening to this, I hope you'll, uh, you'll watch Lucha Underground on Wednesday nights and Impact Wrestling on Pop TV on Thursday nights. Follow me on Twitter at The Real Morrison. Follow me on Instagram at John Hennigan. Check out my Facebook, John Morrison. Go out of your way to watch Boone the Bounty Hunter. And also, please rate and review Boone on IMDb, Amazon, iTunes, Rotten Tomatoes, and, um, and all the other ones, too. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to do things that have never been done before in wrestling. To find out what I'm talking about, make sure to tune into those shows. Johnny, thank you so much. And I, uh, again, thank uh, everybody from the media who's called in today. And please don't forget, next week we will have a, a big one. We're going to talk GFW Creative with the three guys that are running it right now, Big John, Scott Demore, and Sanjay Dutt. So, Stay tuned for that next week here on the GFW Media Teleconference.